that's even a version of pre-ordering. Yeah. Going along with pre-ordering, this is another kind of pre-order. Early access gaming. This is what I want to talk about. So, early access gaming is booming on PC. It's come to the console realm. I don't know if PS4 has a version of it, but Xbox does. Does PS4 have, like, an early access thing? I don't think so. I mean, you just, you play betas or whatever, but I don't yeah. think there's, a, like, a legitimate early access. Yeah, so Xbox has early access now. Um, and uh, I actually have early access to We Happy Few because we were fortunate enough to get a review code. I haven't touched it. Because I don't want to play that game and see it while it's getting better and better. And then when the actual game comes out, I'm already over it. That's my biggest problem with early access games. Some people feel that if, you know, you shouldn't buy a game before it's a full game. Because you're basically telling the developer you don't care about even playing the full product, right? That's its own argument. The thing I have a problem with is like early access games, they expect to keep people's attention for so long. And you're going to play an early access game and you're going to enjoy it. But guess what? By the time the actual full game comes out, you're going to be over it. You know, and I I don't necessarily believe in early access gaming as something that's good for the industry. Do I think it's bad or harmful or poison? No, I just don't think it's a trend that should be followed as heavily. Um, I think that it's basically a cop out to doing uh, QA testing and beta testing and alpha testing is like, hey, instead of having these people we're going to pay test our game, let's have people pay us to test our game. You know, I don't like that. Um, there are some some examples where this kind of stuff is like, uh, for like a MOBA or like a multiplayer based game, early access kind of makes sense because if you want it to be an esport or something that's taken seriously, you need the balancing right. You need to check the meta and that kind of stuff. And early access kind of makes sense because you need people playing it to kind of have it develop along the way, right? But if it's like a single player experience, like a narrative driven experience, I think that's kind of kind of lame that it's early access because you play through the story what else is going to change really you know i don't know i just i have a lot of pessimistic opinions on early access what about you no i'm with you i don't i don't i don't have super strong opinions on it but you're right it really depends on the kind of game so we happy few i mean i don't know but to me that feels like it's going to be a more narrative driven game that's not incredibly long yeah so so you're right you could play too much of it i don't know how long the early access goes for that or how much you can actually play maybe it's only five percent of the game but but yeah with a game like that yeah i wouldn't want to touch it i just want to wait for the whole thing exactly um, if it was something like uh, a crackdown or just cause or something with a big open world where you're just running around screwing off that I, I could see that like oh here's it, it becomes like a demo almost um but then there's a the whole argument of should you have to pay for demos like you know that's a good point yeah because early access you do have to pay for um I don't know. I've never actually done early access. I've only even played like two betas, I think, in my life. Yeah. I don't even bother with betas. Um, I played the Destiny beta a lot. And I kind of wish I hadn't because I lost all that progress when I actually bought the game. Um, and it, I don't know. It just felt – I kind of felt a little less satisfied when I got the actual game. You lose that day one luster, like that new car yeah. smell, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I don't even – and actually – three betas i played because i played battlefield one's beta that one a little bit different because i'm probably not going to buy that game yeah so i had no problem playing the beta for it was almost a complete day um so that that's a little different but yeah i don't i don't have super strong opinions on whether early access in general is super bad for gamers or you know i i think the, the, the bad thing about early access gaming, whether or not you want to pay for a game, once again, it's up to the consumer, right? If you get jaded, if you feel like you're, you're you know, being being uh, taken for a ride, that's kind of your fault for paying for those games in the first place. The issue with early access gaming, too, is that it is having demos be, like, removed forever, kind of. You know, we see far and far fewer demos as the days go on, as the years go on. And with early access gaming, now it's even more going to be more prevalent because there are people are like, why would we release a free demo to everybody when we can just have people pay to play our game early, you know? Um, Pokemon so, Pokemon Sun and Moon released a demo recently, and it was nice. It was a small slice of the game, very small, maybe 25 minutes, 20 minutes at max. Uh, 25 minutes at max, 20 minutes usually, regular playtime. And it was enough of the game for me to be like, cool, I'm excited. And I kind of even feel bad for playing the game because I'm like, this is a section of the game. When I go back, I'm so OCD and stuff. When I go back and play, i like, oh, yeah, this is a section of the demo, and it'll be stuck in my head, you know? So it kind of sucks, but... So where do you sit on, and this is slightly different than early access, um, maybe not functionally, but 
<clears throat> on uh, pre-order the deluxe edition, and you can play a week early. Because that's been going around a yeah, lot, too. Yeah, $100, you got to play Gears 4 early, you got to play Battlefield yeah. early, and Forza, right. I think. So, uh, for and it's tough, too, because for single-player stuff, I mean, sure, go ahead. What, if you want to pay more, I guess play it a week early. If that's done and it's not going to affect anything else, sure. I can see where people have an issue with multiplayer stuff, where that's kind of crossing the line into pay-to-win, because people are getting a weak head start leveling yeah. up in multiplayer because they had more money. I'm not gonna, you know, twist my nuts up over it. I don't, <laughs> but I'm not into multiplayer gaming very much anyway. Well, so I think I can see why people would be upset with that. I don't. I, I. It's been a while since I played Gears Gears multiplayer, so I don't know exactly how the systems work. But a game where it wouldn't be a problem at all is Overwatch. So every time you level up in Overwatch, you get a loot box, and anything you get in a loot box is all vanity items, right? Leveling up offers you nothing but vanity items for the characters. So if somebody has four days early access, they just have more skins than you. There's literally that nothing, good. no other advantage they have, right? Yeah. I think, and also the ranked mode wasn't at launch. I think that's another thing is if you have a more casual thing and then you have the ranked playlist, maybe don't make the ranked playlist available to those early people. Make the casual playlist available to people, you know? And that, that therefore people can play the multiplayer and get good and they'll still have an advantage and that's fine, but they won't have like an item advantage. They just have a competitive skill advantage. And guess what? In multiplayer games, it's kind of no matter if you get the game four days before me, you still have to play enough to get good at the game. So not having the rank playlist open, that still opens it up to people getting better at the game and people not feeling as if they're left behind. They're just getting bodied by people who are better than them, right? Um, so yeah, I think it, it matters with the game itself. Uh, I think it's interesting that they're doing this. I don't feel... People are like, well, what if people can't afford the game? This goes back to, like, then wait four days and just buy it for $60. Like, yeah. no one's forcing you to buy it on that day. You're putting these in your own head. And you like, can't... There's a there's a lot of things I can't afford, so... <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to say, hey, you can't buy a 4K TV yet because I can't afford one. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much an early access gaming. Pre-orders early access gaming kind of go hand in hand um, in, uh, in a lot of ways. 